Now you might be thinking, Josh, we don't need a whole video just for a sandwich. Whoa, 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 just a sandwich? This is a cultural work of art. But also, yeah, we do. Humble Cubano. Now, a lot of people have requested this. Uh, obviously, a lot of you guys know it from the movie Chef, one of my favorite movies of all time. There's a lot of specifics that make this sandwich special. It's not just a sandwich. There's a whole lot of stuff that goes into making it, and it's really kind of supposed to have a specific outcome. Granted, there are things that people play with, and all the purists that are watching this are probably going to take a fat jump on me because they're like, oh, you did this, 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 wrong. And I just don't care because to me, this tasted very close to what is correct, and it was very delicious. And I sort of made it my way, but with respect to the culture. So with that said, let's make this, shall we? First thing we need to talk about is our moho pork. You need a big, thick, three to four pound boneless pork shoulder. Except for the fact that I didn't look at the sign and it was misleading and it actually was not boneless and I had to debone it myself. Yeah, uh, don't do that. Now to a blender, you're gonna add two peeled shallots, two heads worth of garlic cloves. It's like 15 cloves. The zest of two oranges and the zest of three limes. Two tablespoons of fresh oregano leaves. Half a bunch of fresh mint leaves. One tablespoon or five grams of fresh ground cumin, two whole serrano chilies, one cup or 240 milliliters of olive oil, one and a half tablespoons or 26 grams of kosher salt, and lastly, one cup or 240 milliliters each of lime juice and orange juice, so two cups total. Put a lid on your spinny cutty thing and blend it on high speed until completely smooth and nice looking like this. Now this is your moho marinade. Separate out one cup and place it in the fridge. You can use that for lots of stuff and we're also gonna use it for the sandwich later. Now the rest of your moho, you're gonna pour over your pork into a plastic bag, Seal it nicely and let it marinate in the fridge overnight. Make sure that there's no leaks or you're gonna have a bad time. Please. Let's talk Cuban bread. Finding the good stuff can be rather hard, so we're gonna make our own. Start off by mixing one and a quarter cup or 295 milliliters of warm water around 100 degrees Fahrenheit with one tablespoon or 10 grams of active dry yeast. Give it a little mixy mixy and let that sit for about eight minutes. While that's sitting, you're gonna mix together three and a half cups or 500 grams of bread flour along with one tablespoon or 13 grams of granulated sugar and two teaspoons or five grams of fine sea salt. Whisk that together until thoroughly combined. Begin mixing on medium low speed in a stand mixer. Add in your warm yeast mixture and let that stir and knead until everything's thoroughly combined and continue to mix for about three to five minutes or until it begins to turn smooth. Then add two and a half tablespoons or 30 grams of solidified lard. Yes, specifically lard. Just do it. Don't be a widow baby. And then mix on low speed for about a minute until combined and nice and smooth. Oil up a medium sized bowl, shape your dough into a ball and place it into your bowl. Cover it with greased plastic wrap and let that rise for 45 minutes to an hour or until doubled. Degas your dough by backhanding it repeatedly. Just punch it down. Yeah. Dump it out onto a lightly floured work surface and divide it into two even pieces. Cover your dough with a damp towel and let it rest for about 10 minutes just to relax. A little sleepy sleep. Now take one of your segments of dough and flatten it out so you get a roughly a half inch thick rectangle. And then starting from the bottom closest to you, you're gonna tightly roll it up from the bottom all the way up to the top doing your best to close the seams on the bottom and on the sides, and then carefully begin rolling it out while applying pressure outward to sort of taper the ends. Now one thing about tension is you can rub your fingers along the length of the dough while also keeping contact with your board, help tighten it up a little bit. Place a finished log onto a parchment lined baking sheet, repeat with a second log, and place on the same baking sheet at least four to five inches apart. Cover that baking sheet with another baking sheet and let that proof for about 30 minutes at room temperature. To bake these, lightly spray them with water and then using a razor blade, score a shallow seam along the entire length of the dough, place it in an oven that's been preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and underneath that, you're gonna add a small pan of boiling water. Make sure to spray the inside of the oven just a little bit. We're generating steam here. Close the oven and let that steam for eight to 10 minutes. Reduce the heat to 375, remove your steaming pan and let it bake for another 20 to 22 minutes or until you pull out two thick, plump, lightly browned Cuban breads. Make sure to let this cool down completely before you use it. I actually like to bake this stuff a day or two ahead of time. It's okay if they're soft because you're toasting it anyway. Wow. First off, big win. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, look, I'm, look. Hi, son. Ooh, that smells really good. Put it down. Put it down. And now, it's Cubano time. Okay, so back to our marinating pork. Look at that fat, juicy masterpiece. Carefully remove your pork from the marinade, place it into a seven quart Dutch oven, and then pour in all the marinade into the same pot with the pork. It should come up around halfway, and if it doesn't, you can always add a little bit of chicken stock to bring it there. Then just take that pot, place it into an oven set to 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes, then immediately reduce the temperature to 350 and let it cook, turning occasionally to make sure all sides get browned for three to three and a half hours, and you'll end up with this beautifully browned, 
juicy, incredibly tender piece of meat. Let that cool a little bit. In the bottom of the pot, you have all that moho that's separated from the fat. I'll admit, it looks a little bit like diarrhea, but it's caramelized, almost confit in the fat. Take all those solids out, pulling out as little fat as possible, place them into a bowl, and you've got this sort of like caramelized moho sauce, which we'll use in a second. Now, once your meat is cool enough to handle, or you have as best as hands like I do, or well, maybe not, Shred it apart so that you burn your hands a little bit because you thought it was cool, but it's actually not. Once all your meat is shredded, toss it together with all that caramelized moho, season it to taste with salt, and there is your pulled pork. Now we're ready to assemble our sandwiches. Now before we assemble, let's talk about our condiments. First thing, dill pickles. Get them whole and slice them yourself. I don't want to see any more little circles, okay? I want long boy slices like this. It makes more sense for a sandwich, let's be honest. Now let's first toast the inside of our bread. Cut a piece of your Cuban bread to a desirable length, slice that bad boy in half, and butter the inside with softened unsalted butter. Place that cut buttered side down into a cold pan set over medium heat and let that bad boy toast. Now while that's toasting, you're gonna need some good boiled ham. And by boiled ham, I mean cooked, not not smoke, but you can also use smoked if you want. Add a little bit of butter in the pan just to coat the bottom, set it to medium high heat, and sear off at least five to six slices of good ham. Get some good color on both sides, set it to the side, keep that warm. Now, once your bread is nice and toasted like this, don't over toast it, okay? It's assembly time. So get your two sliced toasted breads down, coat them both generously with yellow mustard. On the bottom slice, shingle on your pickles appropriately, followed by your seared off ham, your roasted pork shoulder, and top with a generous amount of Swiss cheese. Now look, I like to get a little bit of color on my cheese. You can totally torch it just to get that melting process done, get some caramelization, and then top with the top of the bread. Now look, this is the final and most important piece. With more softened unsalted butter, generously coat both the bottom and the top of your bread. I know this seems weird. Place it into a cold pan, set that over medium heat, and then place a preheated heavy cast iron pan on top of it. Emphasis on preheating the cast iron pan. Make sure that it's relatively hot, not ripping hot, but hot. And then just let that press and toast until the bottom is nice and golden. Flip it, place the pan back on, and continue to press and sear. Obviously, you can do this in a panini press or a plancha. I didn't have one, so this is the way you do it without one. Next thing you know, boom, pop, you pull this thin, lean, mean Cuban sando out of the pan, and look, it's just so beautiful. And that is a Cuban sandwich. But of course, we've got to taste it. Now, this feels like a Cubano to me. I'm pretty darn proud of it. First, the sound. This is planchad to perfection. Right, you catch that? The exterior is super crispy, crunchy, but then the inside is nice and soft. You have that fatty, melt in your mouth pork, the seared ham, it's salty, it's pickly, it's mustardy, and you've got the Swiss cheese on top to bring it all together. You know, some might say, Josh, all that effort for a sandwich? Yes, you will not have a better sandwich in your life. But do you wanna know what else won't have a better sandwich in its life? That doesn't make sense. B-roll. Guys, and that is it. So we made Cubanos, aka Cuban sandwiches, aka the Cuban sandwich, Cubano, Cabana, Alcabajana, Al wearing pajamas. Cuban sandwich is a very simple thing. It just takes a lot of love and time and caring and hugs and kisses for the sandwich and for yourself. At the end of this, I gotta say, despite all the time that goes into just making a sandwich, A, you have a lot of leftover meat. I have mine right here. You could put it on rice, you could put it in another sandwich, you could put it in quesadillas. There's so many options with the leftovers. Even just the final product is so rewarding once it all comes together and it's such an perfect sandwich that that alone makes it worth it. Again, thank you guys for the wonderful response to my merch. There's still a couple items that are still available. They're dwindling, but if, they're, if there's anything you want, if you're gonna want a hat or a shirt, the apron is officially sold out, but there's still a couple things left, small quantity. There will be a link in the description. But with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.